Next, we need to figure out how to generate the output we're interested in from the model. To show that the parallelization works, we're going to reproduce the results shown here again, but this time using our Fortran code with MPI and with the grid distributed onto two processors. So, using our new parallelized code, how can we write out all the easy components if the easy components are distributed onto two different processors? Well, there are different options. We could have each processor create its own file and write out only the easy components that it updates. So processor 0 would write out the left side of the grid and processor 1 would write out the right side of the grid. If we use this approach, our code will create two files and we would have to load both of these files into MATLAB and then join them together manually in MATLAB, probably using something like the cat function. Alternatively, we could have the code create one file and then have the processors take turns writing to it, but this is super slow and I do not recommend it. Instead, since our grid is small and can fit onto one processor, let's have the supercomputer do the work of joining the data together for us. What we're going to do is have processor 0 efficiently collect all of the easy components across the entire grid, and then processor 0 will write out all of the easies into one file. To do this, we should first create an array that is large enough to store all of the easy components. We'll call this easy plot, this array. Then we need to create a second array that is the same size as easy plot. Let's call this easy plot id this. The values in easy plot id this will all be equal to zero except for the values that are updated on this processor. So for example, easy plot id this for processor zero will have values in the first half and then zeros in the second half. And on processor one, it will have zeros in the first half and values in the second half. We will then have the code combine all of the different easy plot id this arrays on the different processors and they'll combine them into the easy plot array. Let's take a closer look at this. First, we need to create the arrays. And here is some code that we can use to do that. First, we allocate, uh, or we make them allocatable. We give them a dimension of one. Then we give them this size, one to IMAX for both. And we're initializing both to zero. So this is what we had on the previous slide. And now we're adding this part. Each processor here should fill the easy plot ID this array only over the indices for which it updates the easy components. So this is the part where processor 0 will have uh, fill in values for the first half of the grid and then have zeros and processor 1 will fill in the second half of this array and have zeros for the first half. Then in the next part after the time stepping ends, we can use MPI reduce to combine all the easy plot ID this values into the easy plot array. And we're going to do this. Uh, so there's I max numbers for easy plot. They're all real numbers. We're summing them together, and that's why having zeros on the field components that are not updated on that processor equal to zero is helpful. We're going to combine them on processor 0. Note that all the processors must read this line for this MPI reduce call to work. We can't just have just processor 0 read it, for example, or else the code will never finish running because processor 0 will be expecting values and the other processors won't be sending processor 0 values if they don't read this call. And then finally, only processor 0 writes out the uh, easy components and it writes it to a file, one file. We'll call that 20 again. Then in MATLAB, all you need to do is load and plot the file as usual. You can have load easyplot.dat and you can then plot easy plot. Now, MPI reduce is really efficient, so this approach works well for small grids that can be held on one processor. However, for large FTTD codes that do not fit on one processor, usually what is used is parallel 
uh, input output. In this case, we can still create one output file, but using parallel I.O., we can have each processor write its part of the grid to the correct portion of the file. So for example, in this case, we could have the code create one file, and we could assign the first part of it to processor 0, and then the second part of it to processor 1. And they could both write their data to the file at the same time. But this is beyond the scope of this class. Go ahead and add these bits of code. Notice they can go in different parts of the program so that you can create your output file.